If you guys have been keeping abreast with the latest Royal Mint releases, then you will have noticed that the final coin in the William Wyon series of great engravers has been released and is now getting into the hands of the collecting public. I say William Wyon because I think it is quite likely that the end of this year we'll see another great engravers coin, but perhaps uh, a different engraver this time. So uh, nothing very much is known. It's only speculation, but clearly when a coin series is as successful as the three William Wyon, or maybe four William Wyon releases, if you count both sides of the Gothic crown, then it's pretty clear that the Royal Mint's tactics are to um, release again and again uh, until the market says enough is enough. It's a little bit like uh, sequels. So uh, at the moment, we're probably only on Rocky 3. So I guess there are a few more Rockies left to, uh, to see coming through the Royal Mint product system. The coin that I'm gonna show you today is the very latest of those releases. Um, people have been waiting for this coin for some time because they separated out the portrait Gothic crown release of the, uh, the head with the uh, quartered arms release, uh, the tails. And uh, so, you know, I suppose, I mean, it makes good marketing sense so as not to totally saturate uh, the market and saturate uh, people's wallets uh, to separate these two releases out makes total, uh, total common sense. And this is the one I guess that everybody has been waiting for. There is some speculation as to which side of the coin is better. Is it the portrait side uh, or is it the court at arms side? Please tell me what you think in the uh, comments below. But whichever way you have it, um, this is probably one of their best releases of all time. It's a little bit sad in a way that it's a traditional classic design that is the Royal Mint's best release. And I hope that they step up to the mark this year and produce some more modern, uh, individual, unique um, releases, which are of this kind of standard. Some of the work that Timothy Node has been doing recently is absolutely spectacular and Bergdahl and, and I mean there are good designers that work with the Royal Mint um, but their best work seems to be classic type coins rather than modern coins. I'm kind of hoping that sometime at the end of this series they produce this coin as a, a mint medal uh, almost like a replica of the original. I think there are a lot of people who would like both heads and tails on the same uh, coin, even if it's not actually a coin, uh, even if it's a, a medal, uh, I think it would still go down really, really well. But the work they've done on this coin in recreating the 1847 original design is uh, pretty spectacular. Um, I mean, I, I've seen quite a few of the original coins and uh, seeing a coin like this, you know, in a kind of perfect state um, is pretty spectacular to look at. I mean, it really is. You know, it's an amazing design. And of course, uh, in 1847, it was even more exciting and even more unique and was totally acclaimed by the, uh, the British public right from the moment that uh, it was released. And in a way, there are a few different releases of this coin. There's a plain edge gold version. There's this silver version. Um, in fact, here is the, uh, here's the gold version. And this is similar to what they did in 1847, where they actually re released, uh, they did actually make two or three very special VIP gold versions. I suspect most of those are in vaults in Japan, but um, they did make a few of these coins in gold. So it's reasonable to have a gold coin. This is the one with the grailed edge or the, the, the grained edge, however you like to call it. So there were 411 of these uh, minted. Um, you might think that's quite a lot for a two, for a two ounce gold coin. Uh, given the demand for this coin, the, um, the supply was nothing like enough to satisfy the demand for this coin. So even a 411 coin mintage uh, really on this coin is nothing whatsoever to be scared of. 
Um, but you can see what a wonderful job they've done. It has it has great presence. They've they've recreated the original very well. Um, some people have said there isn't quite a, quite as much detail in the braids, but um, overall, I think that it's pretty marvellous. And uh, everyone who's had one of these coins from the mint um, has been absolutely delighted. One of the key things about these, they weren't really on general sale from the mint because uh, they mostly uh, distributed these coins to people who bought the gothic quartered arms coin uh, a little while back. So there were lots of people at the launch date hanging around the mint website waiting for this coin to show, but uh, it was actually a pretty big no-show on the day. Um, and I didn't know that, and they didn't advertise the fact that it wasn't going to be generally launched. So there were lots of people waiting at nine o'clock in the morning on the website for a launch that never really happened. Based on the quartered arms, quality of this coin has been pretty good. Um, probably a quarter to a third of the total mintage of these coins is on the NGC website already graded. And of those, um, 75 percent of them have graded a, a 70. This one you're seeing here is the plain edge quartered arms. There are only 125 of these coins in the packaging, 131 in total. And the next portrait coin for this particular series with the plain edge is not out uh, until March sometime. So in April, May, those will gradually seep onto the graded market and through the auctions. So as we've reached the end of that first phase of the Great Engraver series, perhaps it's time to look forward and look back. I think that whether you are a, a collector, a flipper, an investor, I think generally people have been very, very happy with this series. And I think it's widely held to be pretty much the best series the Royal Mint have produced for many, many years, uh, if not the best since the classic period. Uh, I've been very happy with this series. I think it's uh, produced some very beautiful video material. Uh, each of the coins that the Mint have chosen, the Una and the Lion, the Three Graces, the Gothic Crown, just shows what absolutely amazing designs we came up with uh, in the Victorian period. What a, uh, a brilliant heyday it was in terms of our uh, our, our artistic creativity and classicism and uh, I hope that in the next phase of this series they pick some designs which are equally uh, beautiful and equally historically interesting and I for one would very much like to see this series go on uh, in a moderate way for another three years not be overdone not uh, too many different versions um, you know I think possibly the Royal Mint have pitched it just right in terms of mintages and in terms of different versions. Um, and I think that as the world looks back at these coins in 10, 20 years time, I think they'll still be very, very highly regarded uh, as a real high point in the work that the Royal Mint have done. I would certainly be very interested in your view of the Great Engraver series. What do you think of it? What do you think of it going forward? Would you like to see another set of these coins choosing a different engraver? Uh, and if you were to choose a coin to go in the next series, what coin from the past would you choose to go into the next Great Engraver series? Um, so, yeah, I hope you have enjoyed uh, this video. It's been uh, a pleasure being able to bring you so many coins from this wonderful series and to be able to look back and, and look forward. Uh, so until the next time and uh, on the next video, there'll be hopefully some mega results uh, available very shortly once NGC deliver the next batch of coins. And uh, do let me know what you think. If you're not already a subscriber, you're, you're missing out on some great videos uh, if you don't subscribe and click the notify button so that you can be one of the first to be able to uh, experience some of these great modern and historic coins.